Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well. You're amazing, amazing, beautiful, wonderful people. You look absolutely amazing, by the way. Must be because you've had a good week or you're anticipating a really good weekend, which I hope you do have. Now, in this video, which is video one of two, we are doing something a little bit different because we are just thinking about the forgotten victims of the Idaho 4 case. Because, let make no bones about it, the Idaho 4 case is pretty much become the Idaho 2 as the Gonsalves family have absolutely and pretty much undeniably taken over and made this about the obtaining justice for what happened to Kaylee and Maddie. So for a moment we're just going to step back and just take a look at the crime and absolutely accept that Maddie and Kaylee were both victims of this ter just uh, a horrendous horrific situation. But we have Xana and Ethan. They were also killed on that night. And they deserve justice just as much as what Kaylee and Maddie did. I do find it somewhat telling that Steve Gonsalves has kind of tried to detach Kaylee and Maddie away from Xana and Ethan. He doesn't really address them. He doesn't really speak of them. And, you know, I, I do feel that that's quite telling and... I have thoughts and feelings around that, perhaps that he felt that what happened to them uh, in terms of the, the murder, was it, were they collateral for something that happened around Xana and Ethan? Does Steve Gonsalves in the back of his mind or in his heart feel that they lost their lives because of one or both of these two? which then kind of leads you back into the direction of the the fight that had happened earlier on in the evening and kind of the th the frat brother theory, which cannot be 100% taken off the table, but it does have some issues. There's, there's a lot of parts to that to make that credible. But look, by and by, if Brian Koberger didn't do it, someone did it, who did it, we, we don't know at this stage, but we have an accused. And off the back end of Brian Koberger being accused, that takes us on to other forgotten victims of this crime. And I don't think that we can forget, and I have spoken on this before, months ago, but I feel that at this moment in time, as we approach the, the trial and we see the likes of the Gonsalves family, now Ben Mogan, um, even myself, you know, I'm looking to attend the trial. These guys are all looking to attend the trial. They're reaching out for help. They're reaching out for assistance. And you have Brian Koberger's family. We know that Brian Koberger's family have suffered due to this horrendous crime. Now, love it or hate it, you know, Brian Koberger, if Brian Koberger did this crime, um, then it's, it's still not his parents' fault. It's still not his sister's fault. But worst case scenario is that Brian Koberger didn't do the crime. And, and at the moment, I would hope that there are still people out there who do believe in innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt by a jury of their peers. Because that's what he's entitled to. And I do believe that anybody with a sound and critical mind would or should be able to accept that there isn't truly enough that we, the public, have seen that could justify anybody wanting to see Brian Koberger die. But we know that that is the mentality of some people. And I find it difficult to accept that there are people out there who themselves have lost children. And I'm talking about the Gonsalves family. And one comment in particular about Brian Koberger not breathing. And to not just step back and understand that Brian Koberger has a mum. Now, Brian Koberger's mum was active on social media. She had built herself a little community around making trinkets for the home. And after this, she lost that. She had to come away from it. You can appreciate why. So you did briefly get an insight into the type of person that she was. She worked within a school. She was a very, very highly regarded person. She, You know, people loved her. And in fact, they would talk about Brian Koberger's interaction when he was at a school where she also was in attendance and that he would take the time to speak to her. You know, I, I, you know, we're in a similar situation where our 
children have been at the same school as what their mum has worked in and they're not quite so forthcoming at spending time with her in front of all their friends. So it showed a little bit about the type of person that Brian Koberger was and the, the relationship that he had with his mum as well. But look, that's by and a by. Point being, we know Brian Koberger's family have suffered at the hands of the 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 world, if you like, with respect of the accusations towards their son. We know that they're not wealthy people. Not wealthy at all, but we haven't seen them come out and ask for help and assistance and it makes you wonder what do you think the reception would be if they did a gofundme for instance and asked for assistance to attend a trial that would potentially be a trial that would lead to the execution of their son i want you to take a step back for a moment and put yourselves in that position could you imagine being in a position where you perhaps cannot financially you can't go you can't attend or in order to attend you perhaps have to sell your home or you physically there is no way to do it there is nothing that you can do it's a sad sad situation because this trial is going to go one of two ways, isn't it? Brian Koberger, it will be fat. Well, it could go one of three ways, but let's let's say it could be that they do not find him guilty. They they find him not guilty. They are unable to prove that he did it beyond a reasonable doubt, which I believe is a potential to happen unless there is indeed an ace in the hole that could well exist. But the flip side of it is he could be found guilty. And if he's found guilty, it's of a high probability that he will be then sentenced to death. And it just furthers the tragedy on further. And you then can't fathom what kind of pain, what kind of upset, and what kind of questions and and how destructive that will then become on Brian Koberger's family. I've spoken before about a film called um, We Need to Talk About Kevin, I believe that's what it's called, which depicts um, the aftermath of when a child does a horrendous, horrendous crime and the reverberation that then has upon his, his mum. And it's... Terrible. It's a harrowing watch. And that's about as close to accurate as you're going to get in this situation. But we're all out here and we're all following it and we're all seeing the Gonsalves. We're seeing Ben Mogan, which I, I feel Ben Mogan is, is absolutely doing the right thing and how he's carried himself has been fantastic. But that can't be said for everyone around this situation. But I think sometimes we do just have to step back and understand that this tragedy had many many victims not just those that are thrust in front of us every day and the world just needs to be a little bit more sensitive to the reality involved in these sort of situations brian koberger's family are also victims in this at this stage, we do not know to what extent. Get your eyes peeled. I'm back later.